A uh, question for you, Mike. You guys uh, saw the Dodgers very early this season came out running, had a lot of success. I'm wondering how intentional it was on your part going into the season to put together a team that could just steal bases uh, and use that as a, a vehicle for success. Um, I've been asked this question a lot. The majority of the players that fit the mold that you're talking about came up through our system, we drafted them four or five years ago. So trying to make it seem like now that that was prescient, right? Um, that we knew rule changes were coming four or five years down the line. It's just we ended up drafting a lot of high athletic um, speed guys that have kind of come up through our system and it coalesced with, with, with the rule changes. And yes, that's as the rule changes came to came out and were coming out, we were hearing the discussions of them. We felt like we had an opportunity with the team that we had to make a make a jump from where we were last year um, and turn our offense into a different type of offense than we were able to have before, and we had a lot of success with it. Steve, Derek, can you just talk about the decision to extend Mike and and just kind of what, how that process went? Yeah, we actually uh, we actually talked about it months back. Uh, I made a few references to Mike that it was probably time to start talking about his future and extending. Uh, he had one more year left, and, and of course Ken and I uh, are, are thrilled with the job that he and his team have done, his regime. So we, we started talking really two or three months before all the rumors came out with some of the uh, recent news that had taken place. And uh, it just gave us a reason to accelerate it. And we had uh, real good conversations and we were able to wrap it up before the end of the season. But for us, really a, a no-brainer. We've loved the direction that Mike has, has taken us. Um, he and his team have put us in a, obviously in a, in a good spot. And it's something we've been building. When we first hired Mike um, you know, in 17, one of the top priorities then was let's, let's fix the, the farm system. And we went from a bottom five to a top five uh, in, in quick fashion. And at the same time, he was also building what we were hoping would be a very sustainable model. And we're thrilled with the job that he's done and with his leadership. And um, things have been have been very smooth. So I'm excited that he wanted to be here. First and foremost, you know that was the conversation we had. Obviously, Mike's got, and he can speak to it more than I can. It's him. But he has the history in Boston, and you know Ken and I wanted to make sure that, that he wanted to be here, and he made it clear he did. Um, he also took it upon himself to, to sit down with his family and his, his sons, which we thought was very special, uh, before he agreed and just wanted to make sure they were on board, and of course they were. And so that, that makes me very happy that, that they're all happy as a family in Arizona. He's made it home, and um, he's been a tremendous leader for me. Mike, did you? Could you expound a little bit on that, on your thinking of, of it, sure. your reaction to it? Yes, Derek, Derek, Derek and I started talking about this a, a while ago, and I am so very grateful and appreciative of the opportunity that I have. Um, I felt that from the day I've gotten one of these jobs, and I wake up every day trying to prove that I deserve to keep that job, um, and because of how special it is to be able to work in this type of job and and for this organization and you know look it, it yes i have a lot of family back in boston i have a lot of my best friends that i work with back there we 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 committed when we came out here to building something with that involved winning not just doing this job to do this job or some perception of what could be deemed doing this job well building a farm system or finishing 500, I don't know, um, going deep into the playoffs and winning the World Series. And that's not done. We're not even close to that yet. Um, and and so I felt like that part was very much left undone. Um, and when we when I started this process with the guys, with men and women that I've brought into the organization, some from other organizations, some that we've hired, there's a responsibility to, to kind of still be here and not be the first one to leave. Um, before they get opportunities to go do those things too. And that weighed a lot on me. And then as Derek said, I sat down with my kids and um, the, the vote wasn't, you know, it wasn't unanimous, but like I didn't really weight all the votes the same. You know, the senior in high school had a little more pull than the eighth grader had, you know what I mean? Um, 
but they, they, they all love Arizona. We love the community we have here, the family we have here. And it, it was, Derek and I, from the very first thing, I just told him, I said, I'm not going anywhere. So I want to be here. I, I want to be here. We need to get something done. We want to get something done. It's very important to me that the group that's around me gets done too. And so I'm even more appreciative that Fitz and Amiel got taken care of the way that they did. And, and the, the trust that they showed those two guys who are the backbone of what we do, who are literally the reason we are, have been successful to this point. Those two guys and the people underneath in our front office. Um, and so I'm even more appreciative that when I talked to Derek and Ken about that, that they were equally as excited to make sure that those guys got extended too. And, and, I, and I think that's gonna pay long-term dividends for the organization. You, you said I'm not going anywhere after the Boston thing opened up? No, I mean, just as we were having conversations through the course of the thing, I was like, look, I'm not, I'm not you know, we would have, the first conversation was very casual. We didn't talk about anything specific. He knew I wasn't going anywhere. I, I get what was swirling around publicly, but, um, you know, I think the, the, what we're trying to create here is going to take a little bit longer than where we're standing this season. He's our shrewd chief negotiator, and he took away all this leverage, which was really <laughs> fun to see. <laughs> I'll carry the front. Jack. Hi, Derek. Um, the organization obviously walked through a very tough time a couple years ago. Uh, my question is, is, was there ever a moment of doubt that you made the right choice, and how did you guys work through um, such a down period together with Mike, um, you know, to get to where you are today um, as a team, when I say as an executive team. He's family. Um, we felt it. We were, we were going through it with him. And, uh, you know, looking back on that, there were no regrets whatsoever. Uh, we knew we made the right decision in hiring Mike. Uh, we knew we uh, had to give him as much time away as needed. When Mike just complimented his the rest of his staff, his leadership team, and we know how vital they are and important. They stepped up at a time when we needed them to and they were willing to. They wanted Mike to take as much time with his family as he needed. He did take time away, but I can tell you, he was never really away, <laughs> right? Um, and, and so we almost felt guilty because Mike never stopped working. And you know, he's tireless, uh, he's, he's committed, but you know, the game was important to his, to his wife too. And she, she, you know, watched every pitch with him and was right there for every moment of the journey with him and he was by her side as were others. I mean this entire organization gave them the support they needed. You know, Tori's wife sat there with with Nicole every day. So um, it was tough to go through it. We all grew even closer because of it, but absolutely no regrets and we knew we we had the right guy. He remained as committed to our organization during that tough period as he did when we first hired him or as he did when we extended him just a, a week or two ago. Hey Derek, uh, just curious for you guys, what, what does it mean to you to just have the, the kind of stability at, at this in this particular role in your organization? Mike's obviously been here for six years and I mean, this would you know, potentially make it more than a decade. The stability has been great. It's been a, a breath of fresh air for the organization and for our entire uh, leadership team to know that they have the same baseball leadership in place. And that's you know our field manager as well. They've uh, they've been here uh, since day one together. And for me, um, and, and Ken and I talk about it. We wanted to create that sense of stability. And with what we are trying to build and hopefully have a, a sustainable model, we need that. You know, it doesn't make sense to to continue making changes. Uh, when you like the direction where you're heading, and uh, we certainly like the prospects that we have in the organization. We like the results we've had the last couple of years. I mean, this is a team that two years ago, uh, you know, I don't have to remind everybody, but lost 110 games. And for a, a dramatic turnaround, a quick turnaround, um, it's, it's because of their vision and because of their creativity and, and their expertise, but I'm, I'm thrilled. And that's stability, that's the right word. It is stability. And I'm, I'm excited that we have stability in this organization on the baseball side. We always have on the business side. We have people who have been here from, from day one as well where, uh, you know, we just celebrated those that have been here 25 years during our anniversary. But we have so many folks in our organization who are vice presidents who started as interns or started as, um, you know, uh, in ticketing. And now they're, they're senior vice presidents in our organization. That's the same stability we want on that other side. So I'm thrilled and very proud. Dave. Uh, this is for both of you guys, really. Um, you talk about stability. 
When you go through a season like you guys went through a couple of years ago, how tempting can it be to make changes, to make changes for perception or whatever it might be, but instead of staying the course and then getting the results that you've gotten now? It, it makes it so much more rewarding today when you know you, you made that decision. And, and we could have, we could have made changes. And of course we had conversations about making changes and, and we had conversations about making changes. But we thought at the end of the day we had the right people in place and I think it's proven to be true. Um, you know, we're, we're extremely excited about our, our manager, uh, his style, uh, his philosophies, the relationships that he has. Uh, of course, he and our general manager are very close, but, but I'm, again, I, I think in the past we may have made changes, and we, and we did for, for years, and we've learned that that's not always the right move. You know, we, we do need that stability, and, it, and I'm, I'm just thrilled that it proved to be the right decision and that here we are a couple years later in obviously a much better place. Hi, Mike. Um, Nicole Marte was one of the first players you acquired when you got here. What's it been like to watch him grow over the years, and what kind of catalyst have they been for the team this year? Yeah, the last time we were here, we had brought him up in the middle of the season, and we had to make him our shortstop for the whole the whole remainder of his rookie season. Um, and we ended up playing here, and, and and you know we think about that stuff a lot. Obviously, a lot's changed since then. He's, he's moved around quite a bit. Uh, we we you know it was the I think it was the first trade we made. It was obviously a fairly significant trade right around Thanksgiving, uh, I think in 2016. And uh, you know, at the time, we, we, we thought we were getting a really good hitter, a young athletic kid that was gonna play shortstop for us. And we've watched him grow and mature into a middle of the order hitter um, and, and our second baseman. And you can see at the top of the lineup with Corbin and Cattell, like what they did in that Milwaukee series is what we're capable of doing offensively. Um, you know, and, and and hopeful that that's going to continue now and, and into the into the rest of the postseason. AJ, like this bullpen wasn't exactly this bullpen mm -hmm. a few months ago. How did it all kind of come together? And is this what you envisioned, or kind of how did it how did it all play out? Is anybody's bullpen ever this bullpen <laughs> six months ago? Right? It's crazy. Yeah, you know, we talk about that stuff all the time. Um, I, it, it, it is the most difficult thing to do in this game, in my opinion is putting the bullpen together, keeping that bullpen healthy, um, having them be able to go out and throw 60, 70 games at a very high level. This, this organization, the one we're playing against, has done it pretty consistently, probably rooted in a lot of their success, the way they've been able to do that over and over and over again. It's a model that we're kind of striving after a little bit. Um, we, we, you know, Kevin Ginkle's been with us for a long time, but really started to take forward steps in the second half and became solidified the eighth inning. And then getting Ryan Thompson was certainly something that we were very fortunate to be able to do at that time. It's a little bit of a, you know, non typical transactional type thing where he was released and we were able to sign him as a free agent. And then when we acquired Paul, we had talked about not having a closer for a couple of years now. That that was my fault. Um, you know, we tried to piece it together in various ways. When we did acquire that closer and we got him. Um, I think what it did by pushing everybody a little bit forward was kind of settled everybody into roles and allowed for stability to happen behind that. So I think it really started around the trading deadline, but we started to really see people emerge from there. And then, you know, calling up Andrew Solfrank and having to make his postseason debut with bases loaded and one out on the road. Not exactly how you probably want to draw it up for a young kid, but Tory fired him in there and he's been nailed since we've gotten him too, brought him up. and. Um, and so now this bullpen has become a strength of our team, for sure. And we saw that in the Milwaukee series, but we really saw that in the, from, from the trading deadline on. JP. Derek, you were around 10 years ago, uh, the anniversary of the uh, pool celebration at Chase Field. <laughs> uh, in the event the Dodgers are celebrating something in a few days, is there a protocol for preventing such a celebration yeah. taking place again? No, it, it's um, you, you know we we the rivalry was was strong and thriving then, which is a good thing. I think it's uh, it, looking back and it's all in good fun, and, and it's a completely different group of guys here, you know, uh, on the other side as well. Um, it's just this place is special to me. Uh, I've got a history here. I grew up a Dodger fan. Uh, always wanted to work for the Dodgers. Was fortunate enough to to be able to do that and to go from Vero Beach to L.A. and to work for so many different ownership groups here, including the O'Malley's. Um, you know, this place will always uh, have a special spot in my heart. So it, it is all in, in good fun. Um, 
you know, just coming back here and seeing everybody I worked with for so many years who are still here, that's, that's beautiful. You know, you talk about stability, it's everywhere you walk around in this, in this historic place. Um, but no, like we, we know, like Mike said, this team here, they are, they are so good. And year after year, they prove if you're going you're gonna to go somewhere, you gotta, you got to go through them. And they've earned that. So they have the right to, to celebrate however they want, uh, wherever they want. They've certainly earned that, that, uh, that opportunity. I, I wouldn't mind jumping in the pool again. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. He did. <laughs> Uh, Mike, um, what uh, we, we heard Gabby, it sounds like he's doing mm -hmm. better. Obviously, Jake is down. What, what other uh, you have the second he, Oh, yes. What other uh, what roster considerations are you guys weighing most heavily right now? Um, in terms of the yeah. split, um, I, I'm, I'm anticipating that we maintain the split that we had. Um, uh, we are we're talking about a position player move and a pitching move that would involve a bullpen and bench or uh, platoon scenarios that we might just, we're trying, we've kind of had some conversations already. Obviously we'll file that tomorrow. Um, I'm sure we'll finalize that tonight. And um, it's not, there's not gonna be seismic changes to, to what we've been doing. Up here in the front, we got a pair. You're good. Okay. <laughs> Has there been any change in Mike's title or general description or job duties with this expansion? No. He's uh, he's responsible for all the baseball operations and, and continues to be regardless of you know the title. But the title's the same. Okay, one follow up on that. Um, the organization uh, enjoyed um, a nice attendance bump this year over the last year, and now you're in a playoff run. Um, will those issues, or the, I should say those things, inform your future payroll um, discussions more so than, say, the change in the television contract? We hope so, yeah. I mean, you know, the, the great thing about our ownership group, and Jack, I think you, you know this, is they, they've never put a penny in their pocket, and they're always going to invest it in the product on the field or to enhance the experience of the ballpark. Uh, so that'll continue. The more that we can hopefully grow revenues, which is the whole purpose of why we're looking at where we're going to be in the future, whether it's at Chase Field or elsewhere, so we can grow our revenue, is to compete. And we always want to uh, push the envelope as much as we can when it comes to, to player payroll. And uh, our commitment, that's never going to change. We're going to continue to do as much as we can to give them more to, to use resource-wise. This is, uh, this is really for both of you guys. Just curious, how do you guys view the challenge of having this Dodgers team in, in your division? Uh, I, I don't really think about it. They're, they're a really good team. They're in our division. I mean, if you pick a lot of other divisions, you can, be in, you can ask that question of a lot of other teams, right? Um, they have consistently shown the ability to go out and retool and repurpose their roster and bring on the next wave of guys and be just as good, if not better. Uh, they're probably the best run organization in baseball, from my perspective. Um, but that doesn't mean we can't be too, right? That doesn't preclude us from doing similar things. We have access outside of maybe some players. We have access to all the same resources, the same decisions in the draft, um, you know, the ability to go out and make trades. I mean, going out and get Ryan Thompson. Anyone could have gone out and gotten Ryan Thompson, right? And and so that so the fact that we got him this time, but if we miss on the, the other ones that we didn't get, then that, that's not the, the excuse of the, the Dodgers being in our division. It's not, the, it's not what we talk about in our walls. So I don't really think about it too much. We, we have a strong division. I actually think getting into the playoffs helps us when you play in a strong division because you get battle tested during the course of the year, having to walk into this place and play these guys and get throttled sometimes and sometimes stand up to them and, and beat them like we did earlier in the season. I, I just think that prepares you for playing in this environment right now where every single pitch and every every ounce of preparation matters um, to win in October. I, I think it's it's exciting to be in this division and you know any given season any of any of these teams in this division could have a successful season and you look at what the Padres did last year and even at the end of this year they were coming on the Giants were were in until the very end so I think it's it's anybody's division any season um, and, and I have confidence in our, our baseball leadership that we can compete, we always will. Take two more, one on the front, and we'll go to Bob. Um, Mike, I was, I was curious just what your observations are of the continued evolution of Merrill Kelly. 
when we first signed him, um, you know, we were extremely excited to get him. Um, we didn't really know what to expect. You know, I know, I know a lot of pitchers have come back uh, and, and been very successful. Um, we thought he was going to be a solid back end of the rotation starting pitcher. Um, what we've seen with the emergence of his ability to command his stuff, throw multiple pitches, not just rely on extreme velocity, um, is kind of the old school way of pitching in a, in a lot of ways, and he embodies that to me. Um, and as he's gotten older, he's gotten better. And that's, and, and every year, I think this is probably going to end up being his best season. I'm guessing he's going to get Cy Young votes, I'd be, I guess, given, given the year that he had. Um, he and Zach at the top of our rotation are, are one of the main reasons we're here. Bob. For uh, Derek and Mike, what you guys have done the last two years, what the Orioles have done, the Reds almost made the playoffs, what does this mean for the industry? And you had a lot of guys reach out from other teams, giving them hope. Yeah, I, I, we hear from I, we hear from a lot of different. I think when you're the small market, mid market team, like you know the the team that lost 110 games, like, I think the rest of the league kind of roots for you a little bit more so maybe um, than the teams that are there every single year. So you get a lot of those types of messages from our from our um, uh, folks around around baseball, at least in, in our positions. Um, you, I think what we saw this year was probably the most end-to-end -end competitive season that baseball's had in a while. Like, there were a lot of teams like us in our situation. I mean, the, the wild card's going right down until the end. The amount of teams that were competing, I think that's only gonna continue going into the off season. I think, I think you're gonna see almost every single team going out there with a chance to win. I think watching what we've done, what the Rangers did, what the Orioles did, it, it, we, didn't, we didn't do it with a lot of mass changes. I mean, we, we started playing better baseball. We started making some smarter decisions, but we started playing better baseball. And having the extra wild card was a huge separator for us. A couple years ago, we won 85 games in 19, we didn't make the playoffs. Now we won 84 games, we made the playoffs. I mean, it's, that carrot is now gonna be out there for so many more clubs, and I think it's great for the game. Yeah, Bob, I think um, I'm excited for our fans because you, you, you have a narrative, you tell the story for a couple of years saying, we're proud of our draft picks, we're proud of the moves that they've made, and just trust us, wait till you see this Corbin Carroll play, wait till you see Jordan Lawler, Brandon Fott, Ryan Nelson, Kyle Nelson, uh, Gabby Moreno, and the fans need to see that it's real. And they, they have seen that at the end of last year and into this year, the momentum that we created last year to say we do have this exciting brand. You know, Mike talked about the style of play, the young players, the athleticism, the speed, and I think the changes, and I, I applaud Major League Baseball and the commissioner's office for the changes that we had in the rules, but it sort of favored our style of play as well. And I, I think you're seeing that throughout baseball. There's an exciting brand right now in baseball, and the teams that are, are turning the page and, and making that next step are showing the same sort of style with the, with the speed and athleticism and, and youth. Um, I think it's been, been a lot of fun for our fans to, to experience it, and I'm thrilled for them.